How's everybody doing? I hope everyone's doing good. Anyway, I just want to talk quickly about the napkin design. I've mentioned it earlier in some of my other videos. And I use the napkin design to build from. And it's really just a sketch. That's all it is, just a sketch of the building from a photo. Right? You use a photo, you do a rough sketch. In this case, uh, this Dairy Queen, I got a rough sketch from a photo off of Google Imaging, right? Google Image is an excellent resource. I wish we had that back in the day. I mean, we had to do everything manually. We had to go to site, take photos, go get the pictures developed. It was a real long, drawn-out affair. Now we've got this wonderful resource uh, for the modeler, for images of everything you can think of. So what I did in this case is I got some images of a sort of 60s, 70s style Dairy Queen. Did a rough footprint. It's roughly, I want to have it two and a half by three inches. I got this measurement off my layout. This is the space I needed to fit. So and this is HO scale. So it's sort of a cut down Dairy Queen. The building's probably longer. Maybe some, some of them are wider, but they're actually small ones like this. And so once I got that rough drawing, then I kind of know, right? Um, like with this building in scale, and HO is, you know, 20 feet wide and, you know, 14 feet high or whatever. So this is called a napkin design, and what it is is just a rough sketch to start a build with. It's a term that uh, they use in the film industry. You know, you go to site location, you take a bunch of pictures, you want to get the crew working right away, so you, you give them what we call a napkin design. We built a lot of sets back in the day from just napkin designs that were, you know, beautiful works of art. And by the time the official drawing gets done, the set's already built. But anyway, that's what I use for doing miniatures. In the same way, I apply film and theater techniques to the miniature in the same manner. Now, let me show you just a tip on how you get the size of a building roughly. So in this case, I'll take this wall out. This comes out, and there's a little door there. So let's say the door is seven feet high, right? Well, in this drawing, we know that these doors are seven feet, let's say, right? Seven feet high. So you take the photo, and you take a measurement directly off the photo, and we know that that door is... Well, let's use this door right here. It's 20, 20 millimeters, right? Or a roughly three quarters of an inch. So we have 20 millimeters there. So if we move this up 20 millimeters, then we have up to here another 20, 20, and then 20 to the top of this roof, right? So we got seven, 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 21 feet, and then one more 20 feet. So we know the top of this roof up here is roughly 28 feet. If we know that the doors, let's say three feet wide for the purposes of this video, well okay so on here it's 10 mil, that's another three feet, another three feet, right, you can do it that way. Or like this opening right here, like we know pretty much that this engine shed opening is probably 14 feet high, right? So we got 20 millimeters and then another 20 millimeters is just below the top of this beam here. So we know, right? So we use it, the standard door size in a photo to establish rough ratios and dimensions for the purposes of model building, right? So in this case, with a building like this, I want to build a model of this. This is Southern British Columbia Rail Building, actually Surrey Rail Link now. So how do I get the rough measurements of this? Like I want to build a facade of this building, right? And I want to build it to scale in HO scale, right? Well, okay, it's going to be pretty tough with this drawing. But what you can do is you can get the address of the building or just Google up Surrey Rail Link main office. Like you'll find where it is on Google Maps. Then 3D it, you go to Google Earth. And if you look down, you'll see there's trains like in the photo on Google Earth. There'll be trains sitting out here on the tracks. If it's a 50-foot boxcar, well, then you just use right off the screen, your computer screen, and just say the boxcar is one inch long on the screen, but you know it's 50 feet. You go one, two, three inches. Okay, this building is three inches wide, so that's three times 50 feet. So I know the building's roughly 150 feet long this way, right? 
the depth is irrelevant if it's up against a flat because you're only going to build a facade anyway. But if you want to do the full building, you can do the same thing. Use a top down of Google Earth, but use another familiar object as a scale to scale it. And then once you get the feet, then you use your HO scale ruler. We know that 150 feet, well, this is 85 feet right here. So the building in, in HO is going to be like this long, right? It's going to be a couple of feet long. So that's how you scale off a drawing. Uh, the BC Rail building that I did, I'll just close with this. Um, when I did it, I knew that this tank right here was approximately 12 feet high. So it's, almost, it's probably about the same, so that's about 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters takes me right to the top of the roof. So I know 12 plus 12 is 24, so I know that this roof is 24 feet high. And then likewise, I can go off the diameter of this, or if this is two two and a half feet or, or four feet, let's say, yeah, it's about four feet, 10 mil, let's say, and you just go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and you know that it's a couple of feet, and you do the math, and then you use your HO ruler, and you know the length, so now you got a footprint, right? So you just need the footprint of the building, the height, the width and the depth, and then all this gack or details or greebles, whatever you want to call them, you can figure that all out with the same kind of standard, right? It, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be perfect, but you're going to get a pretty good representation of the model. And in this case, this little Dairy Queen, that's how I did it. And then the roof, I didn't have any movements for the roof because the roof overhangs, so I, I only have so much of a footprint, so I just custom the roof. It's going to be shorter on this side because it's on the other side of the layout, I don't really care about it that much, right? But this side's going to show. This side's going to show more, so I want the detail, like the gas meter and the downpipe and, you know, and the little door. You know, I know that as you approach the model and you view it from this side, you know, you're going to see through the window the door going to the back room. So this will be modeled like abandoned kind of building, like and a little parking lot stage left on the layout. Okay? Thanks for watching.